five simple ways to improve your JavaScript code. All right, so starting us off, we have using const over let whenever possible. Now, it is 2022, so I'm not referring to avoiding the use of var, but I am referring to, of course, like I just mentioned, um, using const over let. Now, in my own personal experience coding JavaScript, I found that I probably use const nine times out of 10 and only use lets in those very rare scenarios, all right? The main reason for this is because I'm never actually reassigning data. And when I am, you know, it's for a very specific reason. Okay, so as an example right here, I have a new array called people that's currently empty. Then I'm simply adding two person objects to that array. Now I'm using let's here for the array uh, assignment. Okay. Now the reason for let is because I've seen so many examples online of people, you know, using let in a situation like this, probably because, um, you know, they think they're adding elements to the array or modifying it or changing it. Therefore they must use let, but it's actually okay to use const here because even though you are technically adding data and changing the array, um, you're not actually reassigning it. So that's the main sort of difference there. So if you were to say people equals something else like this, for example, this is where you need to use let. Um, but like I said, using the push method on the array is not reassigning it, all right? So another example might be a for loop, okay? So for let person of people, um, you can make this const and it's perfectly fine because especially inside a for loop, you're never going to be, you know, reassigning that value. And the main benefit of doing this and using const whenever possible is that, you know, if I'm reading your code and I see const everywhere, I know that your data is never going to be changed. Therefore, um, you know, I don't need to sort of look around and see where it could be changed. It's all a lot simpler to manage. Next up, we have the usage of template strings. Now, this right here is fairly common, so you guys can easily skip this if you already know it. But essentially, uh, we can actually simplify the construction of strings. Okay, so as an example right here, I've got a constant called my name equal to dom then I'm saying hi my name is dom by simply saying you know hi my name is plus my name plus exclamation mark to of course concatenate those strings together and of course I get a result like this in the console now like I said you can easily make this uh, a lot simpler and that's done by using template strings so they're also called templates uh, template literals um, and basically they're done using the back tick near the one on your keyboard, that character right there. So now you can actually use multi-line strings as well with this, but the main benefit of it is of course, being able to pass in expressions and variables and so on. So as an example, I can say, hi, my name is, then using a dollar sign and curly braces, I can just say inside here, my name. Now. That right there is going to grab my name, Dom, and put it inside the string to give us the exact same result. I forgot the exclamation mark right there, and that's fine. And, you know, you guys can call functions here. You can put any expression in there, and, you know, it's going to be fine. So you can easily construct strings like that. And like I said, you can also do multi-line if you want to. So that is uh, the usage of template strings. And now we have array map, okay? So array map is gonna allow us to do things to every item in the array to produce a different result. So as an example right here, I have the same people array from earlier on with the two people objects inside of it. Now, let's say I have a requirement to convert these two objects into a new array of formatted strings. So something like Dom is 43 years old, then a second item, Jesse is 51 years old. So now, you know, if you wanna convert this array into this, uh, this new array right here, you might see someone do this where you declare a new array here called formatted equal to a new array. Then say something like for every single, uh, you know, person of the people array, we can say something like formatted dot push, then use string concatenation to sort of say, you know, uh, person dot name, 
is and then so on and you can sort of build your strings like that but it's actually a much easier way to produce this result right here because array map was sort of like built uh, for this purpose right here so let's go back up here uh, an added benefit is the ability to use const so I'll say const here instead of let um, actually my mistake guys of course we use push so there you go um, we could use const here as well but anyway um, let's change this to const okay um, and we can now say something like this where we're going to say, uh, you know, people.map, okay? So map is going to allow you to pass in a function. This function is going to run for every single item inside your array and whatever you return from that function, it is going to be the new value. So we can say here, map, grab the person. Then we can say here, return. Now, whatever I return, like I mentioned, from this uh, function it's going to be placed in these positions okay so we'll say here return uh, you know uh, person person dot name then say is then say here uh, person dot age years old and that right there is going to give you this same result so a much easier way to loop through your array and create a new array from the same items all right, so next up we have object destructuring and this one here is one of my personal favorites because it's gonna really simplify your code, especially when dealing with things like event listeners, all right? So as an example right here, we have some input field selected from the HTML page called some input field. Then I'm saying, look, whenever the user types or you know does key up inside the input field, we're gonna grab onto the event and we're gonna say, look, if they press the enter key in the input field, then do something, all right? Now, as we can see here, we have the event object. So we're saying E dot key. Now, obviously inside this function here, we only care about the key property of the keyboard event object, okay? So we can actually simplify this. We're gonna say here in the uh, function, we're gonna add the parentheses, then say here, curly braces, then say key. Okay, so as we can see here in VS Code, you're gonna get all of the properties and functions that are part of your event, but we're gonna say key right here. And now I can simply just say, if key is equal to enter, it's gonna grab the key property from the event object and simply uh, take it one step down and place it in a new uh, variable called key. All right. You can also put a comma and say something like prevent default as an example. So if you also want access to the prevent default method, you can also do that and simply call prevent default like this. Um, and yeah, guys, so that right there is definitely going to simplify your code, especially in things like event listeners. And last but not least, we have uh, using the or operator uh, to set default values. So this one right here is a nice trick to save you lines of code. As an example right here, as we can see, I'm calling some API to get me a response which contains like user information, all right? I'm then saying, let me default my user's name to be unknown user, but if the API contains a username property and it isn't null or undefined or empty string or any other falsy value, then we're gonna set that username to be that actual API value. So the API might be your backend, your login response, whatever it might be, right? So we can actually take these four lines of code into a single line of code and have the added benefit of using const by using the or operator. So we'll say here, const username is equal to, then say API response dot username or unknown user, all right? So now we can get rid of these three lines of code and now we have the exact same result in a single line, okay? So this is checking, look, it's saying, if username is undefined, null, empty string, zero, any falsy value, then we're gonna default to unknown user. But if this is, if you know, if this is actually a real value, if it's got a, if, you know, if it's a string with at least one character, um, then we're gonna use it, right? So if it's provided, use it. Otherwise, don't use it. Use the default. The issue with this though is that 
if an empty string or a zero is actually a valid username or value for your constant, then it's still going to default to unknown user. So doing this empty string or this unknown user is going to give you unknown user. To prevent this, you can actually use the nullish coalescing operator. It looks like this dollar sign dollar sign works in the exact same way, but it only checks for null or undefined before going to unknown user. So this right here is probably the better way to do it, but just make sure you check the compatibility table um, for this operator. And that is all for today's video, guys. Hope you enjoyed this one and you learned something. If you did, drop a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.